Hi, this is James from the Hornbill Technical Support Team and this is a short tutorial to show you how to configure email templates. So, as you can see here, we're using the 750 SP3 client and this will apply to all versions of application, whether it be ITSM, ITSMF, etc. Um, so, the first thing I'm going to show you is the actual creation of the email templates. Uh, I'll be giving you an overview of what kind of templates are available, um, how to add in variables for your uh, templates, um, how to use them against calls, and setting defaults. So um, the first thing I'm going to do is just go into our Manage Email Templates to show you the area that it's actually configured. You'll see that you'll have a list of templates for each individual mailbox that you have, so that includes personal mailboxes and also uh, shared mailboxes. So within each one of these here, you do have pre-configured uh, particular templates, um, so you can simply see each one of these here if if you're not wanting to you know do too much work to them if they make sense to you how they are maybe simply just rename some of them or you know change some of the wording that's absolutely fine you can simply do it through here you know amend this as you wish and save changes however um, if you wish to do something a bit more fancy, maybe you add your own ones, or maybe spe uh, specific teams should be using spe uh, specific uh, templates, that's also possible. So what I'm going to do here is just create a completely new template. Um, you'll see that these are actually separated um, up into individual sections uh, for log call templates. Um, so obviously when you initially log a, a call, doesn't matter what call class, it will uh, appear uh, with a list of particular call te log call templates which will be in here. Um, when you close a resolve a call it will ask you for these list of templates. When you update a call, on hold, etc. The other ones here are purely meant for um, uh, items that you can add in afterwards or uh, well mail signatures specifically anyway you can select that after you create a mail. I'll go through that in a separate tutorial if you want to see that. Um, I'll put the link down at the bottom in the description. Um, for the bulk email templates, um, these are us normally used with the BPM and other areas within support works that you configure email templates from, such as authorizations. I know there might be a little bit of problem here with the duplication, but you'll see in here you've got BPM analyst authorization, you've got customer authorizations, remote support, etc. And all these kind of individual sort of bulk email templates. Um, you can add your own into here, um, there's no problem with that. They won't obviously prompt you for them when you log calls or resolve calls etc. But you can use them in areas like BPM, uh, VPME and uh, other areas such as uh, the system settings as well. Um, you've got also the call escalation templates. Uh, in specific versions of support works you can only uh, use this particular template um, in later versions, I believe uh, ITSM 3.4 and possibly even the later versions of ITSMF, you'll have uh, additional options to actually create um, your own bulk email templates and actually use them for your escalations instead of this standard out of the box configuration. You also have another area here for autoresponder templates. Um, if you've watched my uh, autoresponder tutorials already, you already know a few of these such as the accepted, rejected, etc. Um, this won't allow you to actually create new ones in here, but it will allow you to actually amend the wording if you wish to do so. Um, so that's all in terms of explanation of them. Um, I'm just going to add a new uh, log call template in. So I'm just going to put in test template and I'm going to do it from scratch you'll see that it's got an E next to it. Um, so this means that we can actually create templates using HTML and also plain text. It's completely up to yourselves whether you wish to do so. Um, I'm just going to type in a, just a simple one here. Test description. Just to prove the concept that you can easily save changes there and create new templates. So you can flip between them if you wish um, using the format here of plain text or HTML editor, so you can change in between them if you wish. Okay, so that's uh, the actual creation of the new email templates. Um, now I'm going to go over the 
um, uh, variables here. You can see on the right hand side you have you can have items to select. Now these are actually built through what's called remote query. Um, if I take you to the remote query within the administration menu and uh, manage remote queries, uh, you'll have one pre-built in there called call. So these are your list of variables that you can use uh, out of the box uh, with your support works uh, email templates. You sort of have things such as the owner, log date, priority, the customer name, so handy things that you might want to include. So what I'm going to show you now is how to add new ones because obviously this isn't all of the um, uh, database columns available to you. You may wish to uh, add in your own ones. So I'm going to add in a new one just by clicking on new on the right hand side here. And for this example I'm just going to use the telephone extension. So uh, I'm just going to type in the field name which would usually be the actual column name. So uh, for the telephone extension I know it's uh, telext. Uh, if you wish to check them you might want to go to the the database schema um, on the support work server or the actual schema helper uh, within the help menu. I'm going to select the source because I know uh, customer data is actually stored within the SW data database and also in the user DB table. So you could do the same thing in regards to maybe the company table if you want to get that sort of information out or any other tables that you have um, storing uh, information that you want to bring out in email templates. So the expression I usually make exactly the same as the field name and criteria. Um, you're doing a statement here to match with the open call table. So key search, uh, which is in the user DB table, uh, which is the primary key for the user DB. Usually it's the, uh, the actual customer ID itself. So we're saying key search equals apostrophe ampersand square bracket open call dot cost ID just so that it can match with it when it needs to get that particular parameter. So you can see examples are ready after I click OK of the other ones in user DB so you just need to follow that process. So as I click on OK and close so when we go back into our templates under mail and let's say I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna add a new one a new variable to this particular log call template. Um, so uh, it's not going to look great, but <laughs> I'm just going to add it in here as a uh, variable telephone number. So I'm going to select an item to in insert, and down at the bottom here we've got my added one of telephone extension. You can click on insert variable, and you'll see it'll put it in this particular format, which is usually dollar, and then it's your field name that you specified, and the exclamation mark. What you can do at this stage is you can determine uh, what case it appears in. Um, so for example for the first name one at the top here this will all appear in uh, lower case however if you type the whole of the first name in uppercase the whole of the first name will appear in uppercase. If you just type the F in uppercase that means any capitals that you've put in in the name will appear as capitals. So um, I'm going to keep that the same though. I've added my telex field and I'm just going to save changes what I'm going to show you now is um, how to use that against calls. So we'll see that when we log a call against my test customer, log a call, and I'm just going to log and accept, send an email. We know it's a log email that we uh, log email template that we set up. So here it's specified which template you want to use. So it's important that um, if you have set up your templates using HTML, you m might want to keep this box ticked. We've seen it in the past where a few of our customers have uh, unticked it, and it does actually save the changes once you do that, so you will lose, obviously, all your formatting if you do that. So once you get this prompt again, obviously, just make sure it's ticked. Um, so here, I'm just going to select the top one that I want to use. Uh, I'm just going to click OK. And as you can see, it's populated with the actual telephone number for uh, that particular uh, customer. And you can also see, because I didn't change it to include a capital F in the first name, it's all appeared in lowercase. So that's the basics around creation and linking it against calls. Uh, again, it's going to be exactly the same thing for when you put calls on hold, update, resolve, etc. Um, I'm now going to show you uh, what kind of defaults 
and default settings we can actually set against it. So there's a few preferences that you can actually use when using templates. Um, you can do it based on the machine that you're actually on. So within the tools menu you've got options and settings and in the email tab you have options here to be able to um, select particular templates. So you can actually change it from the actual uh, prompt saying I want you to use a particular template which one do you want to use. You can actually choose the ones that you want without actually prompting you. So I'm just going to use um, let's say our new one, our test template apply and OK that. So now when I log a call log and accept, send an email, so it's automatically appeared. So it's automatically given our, our template without actually asking us which one we want to choose. Um, so that's quite handy. Um, especially if you've got a lot of uh, templates and maybe only particular teams or analysts use spe uh, specific templates. That's quite it's quite a handy tool to use. Just as a final point on that, um, what we're going to do is just just uh, explain to you a little bit further as well around the um, remote query and variables. Is that um, with the bulk email templates, these won't actually pick up the variables that you're adding in the remote query. The reason for this is because it's purely driven for a VPME. Um, so you will have certain um, variables available to you out of the box and uh, depending on what's actually been set up through that scripts itself um, it may need to be reconfigured if you do wish to add uh, additional columns. So um, if you have any problems or any issues with variables or templates sending out um, please let me know. Um, otherwise uh, yeah give us a shout.